the biggest uh, report that we can give is that uh, we are nine. The message is sustainability, mm -hmm. that we, we have sustained ourselves in an atmosphere where the word sustainability was being, was being kicked around as though it didn't matter at all. And you sustain a race if you have the stamina, if you have the talent, if you have the talent and you have the determination to get to the finishing line. We've done that. That's behind, successfully done. Now, we, we now have to, to ensure that we see the finishing line and we get to the finishing line with honor, dignity, and the sense of satisfaction that we have done what we set out to do, uh, which is to give the ordinary citizen, the Aam Admi of our country, a feeling that they decide the destiny of this nation. What have we done in the past 10 years? Free education, free health, free health, and we've got Narega. We've got 100 days of guaranteed work, and if not, 100 days of guaranteed unemployment benefits. Who's ever given this? And hopefully before the elections, you will have food security. Unlike something anywhere in the world, food security, you will have direct transfers, subsidy, direct transfers, at least to a large number of people in the country. And you would have the right value for your land if you're a farmer and your land being taken away for development. Now, all that, all that will be throbbingly alive in people's life. We won't have to say, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. It'll all be there. It'll all be there because they will be participants in it and they are aware that it's their aspiration and decision making that has got us to this. Your critics say the foreign policy is in slumber. I hope they are awake because there is a lot happening in the world and when we go out and the world receives us, I don't see any of my critics around. So uh, I would just say, let them open their eyes a bit, let them open their ears a bit, let them breathe in the fresh air of vitality that Indian foreign policy is experiencing. Chinese three weeks ago had come in 20 kilometers, 19 kilometers into our territory. Do you believe the Chinese? If we don't believe the Chinese, will the Chinese believe us? He's talked about trust. You must begin a relationship with willingness to trust the other side. Of course, you factor in history, you factor in circumstances and experience that you've had. And what is our experience? Our experience is that something happened that went wrong for us, and that was put right, how? By the very mechanisms as Chinese and we have put in place. Now, are we going to complain about things having gone right mm -hmm. after there was a fear that they would go wrong? Are we going to complain about that? Or are we going to complain about why did they go wrong in the first place? Yes, not complain, but certainly try to find out why they went wrong in the first place. Only way to prevent it from happening again is by doing an honest exercise to find out why it happened again. And the Chinese agreed with us, with us on that. Amit Karzai came here looking for more military assistance. Are we ready for that, giving them more weaponry? Are we looking at increasing our military role more than what it is? We said clearly that we have a strategic relationship with, with uh, Afghanistan. We have enhanced uh, that attention to that, uh, ministry, that uh, strategic relationship. But it's a widespread thing. Strategic relationship is not only about weapons. It's not only about training. It's about a whole range of things. But we have both a capacity issue. Uh, how much can we help a friend? And how much shall we sacrifice to help a friend? And the other one is our philosophical position as to how we help our friends. Between those two, such as is possible for us to do for Afghanistan, we will. So but plain speak, more military role? No plain speak. Between friends, we speak from the heart. No plain speak of the kind that leads to, leads to fissures in friendship.